All right, in this example, we're told we have a flat plate inserted inside a duct. So you can see the plate right here. There's a, a duct here with some sort of converging and diverging section. And uh, we're told that the walls of the duct are contoured in such a way that the outer flow over the plates have the velocity profile given here. So u infinity is the velocity coming into the, the duct, so it's far upstream. And then ue is the velocity sort of in the, this outer flow out here. Okay, so that would be like the ue. And we're given that that ue is a function of x measured from the leading edge of the plate. Um, downward and C is the length of the plate. So you can see the C here. So the outer flow has some sort of complex profile as a function of X. And we're asked to find what the expression is for the streamwise pressure gradient as a function of X over C. So that means the pressure, how the pressure is changing as we move in the X direction. So that's the streamwise pressure gradient. And the second part is determine which portions of the plate have a favorable pressure gradient and which portions have an adverse pressure gradient. Okay, so the way that we'll find the streamwise pressure gradient in this outer flow is we'll use Bernoulli's equation. Now there is a boundary layer that's forming on this plate, right? so it might look something like this. So there is a boundary layer, and we, we can't use Bernoulli's equation inside the boundary layer because Bernoulli's equation requires inviscid flow, but we can certainly use Bernoulli's equation in the outer flow outside of the boundary layer because there the viscous effects are negligible. And this is the velocity in that outer flow. So we can, we can use Bernoulli's equation with that velocity. So let's write that down. So we'll, we'll apply Bernoulli's equation. So I'll just write that out. I'm going to neglect the elevation changes because we're told, um, well, we're not told anything about uh, elevation changes in the problem statement. So I'm going to assume it's all nominally horizontal. So we have that. And then if I take the derivative of that Bernoulli's equation, we'll get the pressure gradient. So we'll have dp dx plus rho u du dx is equal to zero. So that dp dx is equal to minus rho u du dx. So that's how we're going to find the pressure gradient is we'll Start with Bernoulli's equation, take the derivative of it in the x direction, and then we get how the, the pressure changes in the x direction as a function of the velocity. So to find the outer flow velocity, we're, we're given that up here in this expression. So let me just rewrite it uh, down below. So our u here, I'll just write it as u rather than u sub e. That'll be u infinity times eight times x over c one minus x over c, all raised to the one-fifth power. So what I'd want to do to find the pressure gradient is I need to take, I, I need to take this expression, plug it in right here. So let me show that. So I would plug this in right there. And then I also need to take the derivative of it. So I need to find du dx. And I'll just write down what du dx is. I won't go through all of the calculus. It's just a matter of using the product rule. But let me just write down what you get when all is said and done. So if I haven't made any mistakes, that's what we get for the velocity gradient in the outer flow. And then if I, I can just take this expression and plug it in Oops, let me fix that for a second. I can plug that in right there. And then I have some complex expression for the pressure gradient. So let me write down what the pressure gradient looks like when you plug it all in and simplify it a bit. This is just a, an ugly algebraic expression. Nothing particularly hard about it other than being tedious and just having to make sure you don't make any mistakes in, in your uh, algebra. So that would be the pressure gradient from that. So really the key thing for that part of the problem is just knowing to start with Bernoulli's equation, which you can use in the outer flow because it's inviscid in the outer flow. Take the gradient of that 
and then plug in, you know, you have to find what the velocity is, that was a given, and then you have to find the velocity gradient, which is just a little bit of uh, calculus there, and plug it all back in. Okay, so that's part one. Part two is determine which portions of the plate have a favorable pressure gradient, and which ones have an adverse pressure gradient. So, just a reminder, uh, a favorable pressure gradient is one where dp dx, so here, let, me, let me write this down uh, in a moment. So, when dp dx is less than zero, that means the pressure in front of you is less than the pressure behind you. That means you'll have a favorable pressure gradient. And if it's greater than zero, that means that you'll have an adverse pressure gradient. The idea here is if you're a little piece of fluid and you're flowing along in this direction, so this is the x direction, if the pressure in front of you is less, so here's like the pressure force in front, and here's the pressure force behind it. So dp dx being less than zero means that the pressure is getting smaller in front of you as compared to behind you. And so what will happen is the, the pressure will help push the piece of fluid along forward. So, so you have a pressure force that's helping move the fluid particle forward. Whereas if it's adverse, it means that the pressure is growing in front of you. So the pressure force in front is larger than the pressure behind it, and so there's a pressure force working against the movement of the fluid. The fluid wants to move in the positive x direction, but the pressure is working against you. So that's why it's called adverse. So to find out which section of the, uh, the plate is favorable and which is adverse, we just have to look at where this expression is less than zero or greater than zero. So if you plug in the numbers for that, you know, if, if I, if I set this expression to be less than zero, um, you'll see that really what it comes down to is um, the following. It, you, you, you can go through the algebra on, on your own on this. I won't go through it. But if x over c is less than 1 half, then you have uh, favorable. And if x over c is greater than 1 half, then it's adverse. It just means, again, that the dp dx, if it's favorable, dp dx is less than zero, and adverse means dp dx is greater than zero. So, again, just to recap how I, how I found this for the second part, is I just took the pressure gradient expression, set it less than zero, found what x over c values made this whole thing less than zero, and then did the same thing, set it greater than zero to see where it's adverse. So that's where these come from. So really, in this problem, the key things are knowing how to find the pressure gradient. Again, that comes from Bernoulli's equation in the outer flow. And then knowing what it means to have a fav favorable pressure gradient. It just means that the dp dx is less than zero. The, the pressure is helping push the fluid along. And adverse pressure gradient means the pressure gradient is greater than zero, meaning that the pressure is working against the